Cody Barton, open us up, brother. What's going on, everybody? Happy Sunday. Welcome to Sunday service. Uh, for those of you that this is the first time joining us, welcome, welcome, welcome. We're excited to have you. Pace and myself have been running Sunday service now for over two years, and we are excited to continue bringing back and you know helping the community be able to grow. And so um, for those of you that don't know, again, we are on Spotify, we are on iTunes, so you can check us out on there during the week uh, and listen while you're driving to work, driving to appointments or whatever you're driving to. Um, we have a freaking awesome guest tonight. This is so I, Pace, I, I don't even know if you know this, but I probably really only consume Michael's content on YouTube. Um, and so I'm really excited to have him here because uh, I, I'm listening to him, you know, almost every day. So um, I'm, I'm really excited about it. And, you know, this is going to be this is going to be a lot of fun. I, I do know that about you. Um, we talk about this handsome gentleman beneath us um, frequently. And he also does a lot of content with my wife, Laura. Um, yeah. in fact, Laura has a blast. And so thank you so much, Michael Zuber, everybody. He's amazing. Um, we've had him on as a guest before in the past. Um, Michael, how you doing, brother? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. And, and, uh, speaking your wife with your wife every Sunday is amazing. She is a weekly expert on my series. She is one of the multimillionaires I go to every week and she crushes it. To, she's helping so many people. So, um, ple pleasure speaking with her every Sunday. Love it. Can I open up the night tonight's question with, uh, or tonight's um, podcast with one question. Mm -hmm. How do you get people to take action? Okay. So think about this. I'm going to, I'm going to unravel this for a minute while you mm -hmm. guys think about this. Okay. I feel like, cause I, I look at other like mentorships. I look at seminars. I look at books. I look at all these things. And as an author who has a, an amazing book and as somebody who educates and does a lot of content, just as we do, one of the things, if not the only real thing that keeps people from being successful is their lack of action, right? So where does that stem from? Because the reality is, so that's the second question. How do you get people to actually take action? Where does it stem from? And I think we have a lot of these answers, but I want to unpackage this for 10, 15 minutes because whatever you guys learn tonight in tonight's podcast, you have to take stuff and actually apply it. Apply it. Because what happens is I talk to so many people. Jamil and I just went to, uh, North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia, Birmingham, uh, a couple of different spots in Florida. We met over a thousand people face to face between all of those locations. We did these little pop ups. And when I talk to people, I can tell there's a noticeable difference between my sub two students or Co Cody and our, our students and other people that are not in any program. But still, still, even in my program where we have daily accountability, we have role playing live. I don't know if you saw this, Michael Zuber, if you follow this, but one of my students got second place in the Closers Olympics. He joined my mentorship program five months ago. Okay. So we do massive, massive role playing. And he went from two for two years, he consumed, consumed, consumed. He spent a hundred plus, no, $75,000 in other mentorships over the course of two years, never got a deal, came into my mentorship. And we have uh, what I believe is something that helps people force them to take action, which is four hours of live role playing every single day, every Monday day. through Friday. Mm -hmm. We have accountability groups. We have Zoom after Zoom after Zoom, like just tons and tons of support, tons of support, like endless amounts of support. And we even have students that do something called open office which mm -hmm. means they're sitting there on a live Zoom allowing other non or other sub two students that are not even on their team just watch them work on their business live all day long. And what it does is it, it gets people to go, oh my gosh, this is really simple. Like there's, this is not that magical, right? And a lot of people are helped by that. Mm -hmm. But I still feel like I'm missing something. I feel like even in my mentorship, even in the way I teach, even the things that we all talk about, I feel like there's something I have to go above and beyond. And so I was talking to my wife on the golf course today and she's like, what's wrong with you? And I go, there's nothing wrong with me. <laughs> Obviously there's something wrong with you. What's going on? I go, I'm just stressed out. Like, I feel like the only way I can force somebody to take action and guys, Cody, if you guys don't know his background, Cody used to travel around the country for a company called Z um, Vima. Vima. I was going to say Zima, but I think that was a white clear beer at some point. That was around the world, not just the U S right. So he would travel around the world 
and he would build teams and have to ask people to essentially take action. So I don't think there's two better people on planet freaking earth to have a discussion about how to get people to take action. Now, I've heard people talk about books, but then I go on Audible today, okay? And I go on Audible and there's literally 600 books about procrastination, taking sure. action and all that kind of stuff. So if it's information that they're they're lacking, I can tell you inf if information was the solution, we'd all be skinny, rich and happy, okay? <laughs> But that's not the case. So it's not information. It cannot be information. It can't be access to some secret, right? What do you guys feel? I've, I've blabbered on enough so you guys can gather some of your thoughts. What are your guys' thoughts that you, as an educator, can do? Because I don't feel like I have the solution to this, Michael. I feel like I need, this is my desire. And I'm texting a lot of influencers, some you've interviewed, some of them that are your friends, some of them we all know, very, very high influential people. Somebody just sold their business for $100 million, I'm texting right now, has $100 million sitting in the bank. And his, salute, his, his answer to me was, good luck. <laughs> uh, well, I like to believe there's, there, there is a recipe for this. So I think both of you know, but for the audience, right? I, I spent 20 years in technology selling software. Most of that time I was leading teams and bringing brand new products uh, to bear. So I routinely took products from zero ideas to a hundred million dollars, right? I was that guy. That's insane. Taking an idea to a hundred million dollars. Yeah. That's very powerful. Yeah. So I've done it multiple times, right? Not, not just a one hit wonder. And, and to do that, it's not a person. It was never me. It was always the team. You have to get team. You have to get people to bond in the vision, belief. I believe there's a three-step process uh, to do this. So the first one is you do have to inspire, which both of you, and hopefully I do, extremely well. You have to get people to believe in you and what you do and your mission and all of those wonderful things. It starts with inspiration. They have to see the mountaintop. They have to believe that you can get them there. Step two. This is where, this is my superpower. And it didn't really come to me until after I quit. My superpower is focus in daily discipline, right? You have to break down the process into a couple of steps and you have to always hold accountable to the steps. So I repeat myself ad nauseum and I produce five videos a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. If you watch my channel enough, you're like, you could almost predict what I'm going to say. It's because I want to remind you it is that simple. You've got to focus on your buy box. You got to look at your buy box every day. You have to network. You have to meet one new person a day, challenge yourself. And then finally, I believe this is where most people miss. And it's actually one of your strengths, Pace and Cody. You have to continually lead by example. Mm -hmm. Why do I produce my positive impact score every Sunday? Because I want people to know that I hold myself accountable and I've been doing it now for almost a hundred weeks. You can go back and look at every video I've done. I've never edited a video in my life. It's just there and you can go back and get that. And that third step is important because you, you get the inspiration in the beginning, you give them the path, and then they've got to be able to look at you and go, are you still on this journey? Are you some jerkwad sitting on the side drinking a Corona and, you know, laughing at people? No, we're, we're on this journey. We're still going there. We might be a step behind you. We might be behind you screaming for support, but we're here with you. And, that's it. You just rinse and repeat, do it again and again and again. And um, the people that come will come and, you know, you got to be okay. No, I, I, I'm unfortunately here to tell you, Pace and Cody, you can't help everybody. I'm only here to help the people that are going to do the work. I can tell them to do the work. I tell them every week, the folks that do get it done. I have this contest behind me now, 500. We've done 290 deals in 23 weeks. And I only did 180 deals in 18 months, right? Me meaning helping others. It's all about others at this point. And it's just because I inspire them to believe the book helps, sure. YouTube helps, sure. But it's it's our story. I'm still growing. We still talk about the deals. It's, you know, I, I talk about my mistakes. I tried to be, I tried to build eight single family homes. Affordable housing in California, affordability sucks. I personally tried to take an acre of land that I own and bought in 2010. So it's for nothing. And I was going to build eight affordable homes on purpose. Then I go to do the whole process. I waste 10 grand and I find out they want $300,000 for me before I move one ounce of dirt. That was wow. a mistake, right? Oh, well, 
I learned a lesson. I can't do it. California says they want affordable homes, but they don't want them. Oh, well, I'll build an ADU. I'm done. Let's go. So again, you just got to continually inspire, focus in daily discipline, and then just get on your journey. Keep building your business. You're on Bigger Pockets the other day talking about 300 units. Keep doing it. Go back in a year, be it 350, 400, whatever it is, and just keep being you. You would be shocked at how many people. The, it's 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 really a momentum, right? When you get going, more and more people get sucked into your vortex. So I would tell you to keep going. Uh, going from zero to 100 million multiple times, the first 5 million sucks, the first 10 million sucks. But by the time you get to like 25 or 30, it, it, it almost gets tighter and it kind of almost builds itself. So that, that's, those are my three-step process to, to do it over and over. Cody, what are your thoughts on getting people to take action? Michael, that's really good. Really, really good. Three, three, three step process. Cody, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah. So I, I am of a similar belief. Well, let me ask you one question before you answer the question. Yeah. Have you ever been frustrated when you were traveling around the world trying to get people to take action? Were you ever frustrated with people that were not taking action? Oh, I have so many stories. I, I spent my own money flying to other state, you know, I went, I flew to other states where they were going to have, you know, 50 people show up at the event, two people show up. I spent money on flights, hotels, cars to be at an event with two people. I went to the country of Ireland to help a team that I had out there. And I did an RV tour around Ireland for 20 days. And there was only two of the events in that 20 days. I was there that actually had more than 20 people there. And they had hyped it up as if we were going to have hundreds of thousands of people between all of these events. I have been to a lot of countries and a lot of states when I was doing that, where I just went and I showed up and it's like, no one's here. And it's just like, go, I would go back to, you know, the hotel or who, wherever I was staying. And I would just sit there with this like lump in my stomach of, oh my gosh, is this going to work? Because, you know, these people aren't taking action. And so I used to get so frustrated, uh, you know, in, in that business when certain things like that would happen. And so um, I had a mentor that that told me and it's always kind of stuck with me and it's helped me. I just kind of go back to this whenever I get frustrated about n someone else not having success that I'm trying to help so dang bad. And you know, uh, he was telling, you know, the story goes like, you know, oh, I, you know, I, I was trying, I was trying to help one of my friends so bad that, you know, I'm like, I'm going to make him successful if it kills me. And he's like, you know, I almost died. You know, you can die trying to help someone else, but if they don't want to do it, it's like, you gotta, you know, so he, he was telling me, he's like, you, you walk with the walkers, jog with the joggers, run with the runners, sprint with the sprinters, you know, when it comes to people around you, the people want to sprint, sprint with them. The people that want to jog, jog. The people that want to walk, walk. It's like everyone wants to go at their own pace. And so kind of meeting people where they are and, you know, get, guiding them at where they're at. You know, it's like when we have conversations with people that are brand new versus maybe they're doing five or six deals a month. It's a different conversation that we give them. Um, but again, you know, not everybody is going to be able to not everybody wants it. Like people have to want it for themselves. They want it. They need to want it for themselves more than you want it for them. And that's, that's where I keep my mental piece of, you know, it's just the way it is. Isn't that interesting? This person does, they say they want success, but they just go home and watch TV and eat junk food and don't do anything to make their life better. It's just the way it is. And, you know, we can, and I think we can just do our best by leading by example. If we, if we show them the way and we offer our in open arms here, you know, I, I will help you, but they have to do, they have to take that first step and that's action. They got to take the, those, those actions to create those disciplines. And so the, where a lot of this originated from is that recently we just did a 30 day challenge where we brought all of my sub two students collectively and we went outward facing which means we took my community, right? Sub two, the, this, the community that Cody, myself, Jamil, like we're all part of this community. We took that community. We told everybody outside of that, right? People that are like, I'm not a student of yours. I'm just somebody that found you on Instagram or whatever. We told them we will help you guys get 50 deals in the next 30 days. Okay. So we had 42 people sign up for this free challenge. 4,200 people sign up for this free challenge, never charge a penny for this. Okay. And did we hit our 50 goal? Yes. We hit 300 and some odd contracts in less than 30 days, 300. Okay. And the difference was this, the difference was 
that the students were saying, Pace isn't going to call your sellers for you, but I will, right? So go take action. So what, we, what I did is I trained my sub two students to be there as the receivers of these leads and be leaders and go, I'm here to help you. Like literally like go as far as I saw hundreds of my students going around the country and driving for deals for people that they've never met two days prior. Okay. That's what I felt like. And I feel like, and I still believe is what requires is required in order to make massive change is to have an army of people just unrelent, like unrelenting, say, I will help you just bring me a lead and I'll do everything else. And then we simplified, simplified, simplified during this 30 day challenge, Michael, this is what we did. And I'm leading up to my point. That's like where a lot of this is coming from. So what we told people is we're like, we're not going to answer any questions about real estate, how to comp, how to do this. We're only going to show you how to find distressed properties, how to text the seller and how to set up an appointment for somebody else to talk to that seller. So you don't even have to know how to negotiate. You don't have to know how to comp. You don't need to know how to know anything except how to find an ugly house, send them a text and set an appointment for somebody else to call them. And I believe that's why we had such a massive uh, turnout, 300 contracts in 30 days, 300 contracts. Now our team only ended up buying like four or five contracts, but our students helped non-students do 300 contracts. That's amazing. However, this is where the question's coming from on day eight of this 30 day challenge. First off the 4,200 people that signed up, what happened on day one, when we started, we had 900 people show up, not 4,200, 900 people showed up, okay? And I told them on day one of this 30-day challenge, I said, watch, by the end of this challenge on day 30, less than 300 people will have stuck through 30 days. Hmm. Even with daily support of an hour to three hours every single day, Michael, we went to the extent where we were out in the field and we had people with two phones tracking Matt Beard in the field, driving for deals. He went to appointments. He knocked doors in a live Zoom with phones tracking him behind his back. Like literally we took the audience to the streets. Hmm. That level of nitty gritty, not, hey, go watch a video and take action. It was like, no, take action beside us while we're driving for deals, while we're looking for stuff. We are doing it too. You follow along. Okay. On day eight, there, there was probably 700, 800 people in the zoom. And when I said, who has still not actually driven for dollars yet? Who has literally just been dry, like consuming content through seven days of this, by this time, we'd already locked up contracts. We locked up our first contract on day three. I mean, other students were locking up contracts, but just us personally on the Zoom, we locked up a contract on like day three or four. And it was like 200 people out of these 700 people had literally not even gone out. They haven't gotten an account with whatever driving for deals app. They hadn't actually gone out and squatted up with anybody. They were just literally there consuming eight days of three hour a day content, 24 mm. hours of just watching. And that's with people in the Zoom chat, just hundreds and hundreds of messages saying, I'm here to help, whatever you need, call me, here's my phone number, da, 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 da. And I'm like, wow. So here's what happened. I then call those people out on their bull crap. And I'm like, who hasn't taken action? And I get this guy on stage and he says, I haven't taken action. And I just blow him up. <laughs> but he takes action. And so did about another hundred of those people. So about a hundred of those people started taking action. I had somebody DM me this morning, which is where this is coming from. He said, if you didn't light that guy up, I wouldn't have taken action and I would have not gotten my first deal. Okay. But what of the other hundred people that literally just bowed out of the race, never even signed up for an app, never even drove for deals, never reached out to anybody. They just sat there and did, they just consumed is the answer for those people at that level of support is the answer that there is no helping you right now and your time will come when you're ready? Or is there something I could have done or we could have done as a community that would have forced that horse to drink the water instead of just leading the horse to the water? Well, I, I like what Cody had to say. Uh, sprint with the sprinters, jog with the joggers, walk with the walkers. And if they're going to stand still and sit on their ass, go help the others, right? Kind of the fourth unsaid. Um, I don't know about you, my time is pretty valuable. 
I'm willing to give everything I can to help someone that's going to do the work. Uh, but I'm not going to help some lazy ass who's going to sit there. And believe me, I've blown up lots of people uh, that come into this hot, like shooting stars. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. And, you know, uh, you know, the beauty of where I'm sitting is I don't need anybody for anything. So right. I'm going to tell you like, you know, what I think. And yeah, I, I think Cody just needs to add a fourth one. If the person's going to sit on their ass and do nothing, then you just let them go. The hundred people that did nothing, you just focus on the 600 or whatever the math was. Uh, and mm -hmm. you're okay with that. What I would tell you, Pace, is this eats at you because you know what you have is life-changing. But, dude, you're not responsible for laziness. Let it go. You should not carry their water. It's mm -hmm. okay. It's okay that those 100 people don't do anything. Just worry about everybody else and don't carry that baggage. You're too, you, your, your heart is too big. Your vision is is. You know that everybody could do this, but they got to they got to pick up and do the work. Um, OK, I, I, lo I love that. So that that leads me into what what I want to talk with you about. And I, I think Cody really wanted you on here for something specific. And of course, I always derail everything Cody wanted you wants you to come on here for. <laughs> but um, here here's my question. As um, as somebody that's educating right? Cause you educate and you've got all the things you're amazing. You've been, you've opened your office to Jamil and I with open arms. You you're such an amazing, uh, man. You, you, you've educated me. You educate a lot of people on my team. Cody only consumes your content. That's, that's speaking high praise. So let's ask this question leading into why you're here. Mm -hmm. Why should people get into real estate? What has it provided to you or some of your other students what, what, why take action in the first place? What is it that they need to be inspired? What do they need to know that is waiting for them on the other side of action? I would, well, I would say to you real quick for, for Michael as well as like for people to understand, because a lot more people have hopped on and maybe they, you know, don't know who, who you are, Michael. So if you want to just touch on that briefly as well, but you know, mm -hmm. to the point of success of having 190 plus stores, I think if, if that sounds right, um, mm -hmm. you know, being at that amount of, you know, rental properties, which is extremely impressive. Right. So, um, you know, tell, tell us that, tell us the answer to Pace's question, but also, you know, a little bit of that, like what's possible too. Cause I think that, you know, helps open people's minds as well. Yeah. Yeah. So what I, what I would, uh, what I would tell folks here is real estate investing is the way for the every man or every woman the average Joe to earn a better financial future first and then financial freedom. Second real estate investing is something you could do at 18 or 88. It is not age specific. It doesn't matter what color of skin you are, religion, sex, whatever. It, it doesn't matter. As long as you are willing to do the work and get after it, there are some basic tenants, right? You make your money when you buy Zillow tried to prove that wrong, but <laughs> They lost yeah, 500. That, that didn't end well. Yeah. Well, if you, if you buy wrong pace, even if you have a lot of money, you can, you can lose half a billion dollars and, and Zillow proved that. Um, you have to watch your debt structure. Our good boy, Dave Ramsey learned that early in his career when he was flipping properties, he had 30 day debt or 90 day debt. That's not a good idea. There are some cardinal rules you should never, never do. But other than that, real estate investing, it is a time in the market it is not a get rich quick. It is a get rich for sure. It starts as a drip, then a trickle, then a flow, and then a raging river. Uh, I've tried to tell people this over and over again. I'm going to take the first house I bought on Norris Drive, which I write about in my book, that actually doesn't start well. The first tenant totally screwed me. But when we look at it from a financial aspect, I buy a house for hundred grand. Uh, I come into this after losing $150,000 in the stock market. I have forty grand. Half of it's gone on this purchase. That purchase in 2002 what is that? 19 years later has become uh, about a half a million dollars in equity. It's become 43 or 44 units. It's a hundred thousand dollars in cash and about 5,000 bucks of my cash flow. Time in the market, cash out refi, 1031 exchange, all of these things. Real estate investing, the longer you are in, the better it will treat you. And just kind of going back to Zillow, Zillow, what made a huge mistake, Zillow has chosen to recognize their loss. As I joked earlier, it's not a joke. They overpaid. But Pace, if they would have held on for a couple of years and become landlords, 
those 18,000 houses they overpaid for, they would have been just fine. Right. They've chosen to recognize the loss, wipe the embarrassment from the records and uh, move on. But that was a mistake. They could have just been landlords, done a, done a 4951 partnership with someone and they would have been just fine. Real estate is really forgiving. You can't overpay. That's, an, and it'll Michael, come back. that's a really interesting idea. Couldn't they have gone to like a Blackstone or somebody else and said, hey, we're getting our butts kicked. Let's do a, a partnership split. We just need to get out of these things and break even in 36 months. We'll let you have any of the upside or what, whatever the structure is. They could have gone to somebody else that actually plays this game. Mm -hmm. Invitation Homes, Blackstone, all these all, invita uh, invitation uh, homes or um, um, I mean, even American Homes for Rent. Or American Homes for Rent. First key, there's so many big hedge funds that would have gobbled these homes up and said, oh my gosh, you already went through the acquisition process. You did the inspections. You closed escrow on these things. All we have to do is sign a couple of documents stating that we're JV partners on this deal and Done. you don't lose $500 million, bro. <laughs> what? It was, it was, the CEO needs to be fired. Getting in, taking chances. I've been in technology my whole life. Not every idea works, but it's how you get out is where the where the leadership comes from and he is being a complete failure he is he's choosing to recognize half a billion dollars in losses he should have partnered anybody would have done the deal we'll take because again they don't want to be operational fine take 49 percent or 51 whatever you guys want give it to someone else don't write it off stop buying because you suck at buying but we're going to wait 10 years and we'll come back and you know so i don't know if you guys know this but We've kind of seen this movie before in the 80s. Um, you guys remember uh, when Japan was really hot and the J Japanese yen got kind of revalued and they yes. went on a shopping spree and they bought Pebble Beach and Rockefeller Center and all these all these class A trophy properties for huge prices. Do you guys remember that? Yeah, I do. So what happened is, is we had a recession and suddenly those assets were worth a lot less money. Japanese companies did what... Uh, what Zillow did, and they chose to sell and recognized hundreds of millions of dollars in, or in yen losses, except one, Hitachi. Hitachi never sold. They still own the assets. Those assets on their books are worth between six and eight X what they paid in the 80s, which was an exorbitant record pricing. All you have to do is hold with real estate. Hmm. I agree with this ent entirely. There's a lot of people in 2008, 2009 that um, first off, you go back to debt structure, right? You talked about Dave Ramsey. Dave Ramsey, by the way, still tells those old stories about how he got his ass kicked from 20, 30 years ago. And that's why he doesn't flip real estate anymore. It's because he had horrible debt structure, bro. That debt structure doesn't even exist anymore. Oh, he, he is so... His real estate investing advice is, um, it should be criminal. He is, he is holding people back. He is saying, live below your means, save for 40 years, hope you don't die and you'll be a millionaire. <laughs> I, you know, I per, I, this is my personal thing because I've been doing a lot of research and a lot of funny like TikToks about him and we've been having a lot of fun with it. He makes $200 million in revenue on his, on his show, preying on people's fear. So if you think about all the reasons why people don't get into real estate is because they're fearful of getting into real estate. So instead of saying, here, let me help you get over the fear, he's leaning into the fear and amplifying it so that he can grab all their money instead of them putting their money into retirement. Dude, if you understand what he's charging for behind the scenes, these retirement things and his own thing, he is raking in the money on praying for people's on people's fear. Now, Here's a good question. T-Town Supreme. Michael Zuber, hmm. what do you think about Robert Kiyosaki's 2022 market crash prediction? I did not see this video. It got suggested into, into my um, YouTube. I have not watched this video yet. I saved it. Have you been able to watch this video? Assuming they're talking about the one with Ken McElroy, I have seen it, yes. Okay, what, 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 catch me up to speed on that. Uh, basically, Robert uh, is repeating what he's repeated five or six times. He got one right. And he goes back and tries to say it over and over again, kind of the broken clock scenario at this point. Mm. And I say this as someone who gives gives Robert credit for Rich Dad Poor Dad starting my journey. Robert has um, he's made a right turn, right? Crypto, gold, he, he has his thing. Um, I, yeah, don't I saw that. What was that like six to eight months ago? He started uh, kind of moving over to the crypto world because it, it's um, popular. 
Yeah, he's moving over there. He he's he is very anti-Fed. If I were to summarize Robert at this point, he thinks the Fed's criminal, and thus everything they do is wrong. It's it's um so no, I don't I do not believe. I mean, we could talk about 2022 market crash. You got to really pull that together. If a crash is a 20% or greater number, there's no chance, like zero chance. I agree with that entirely. I, I don't think that I, I told my team and I told my wife this recently, I think we have 36 months minimum before we have any sort of pullback or anything else. Well, I mean, you guys have been doing this a while. Do you guys really know what caused the crash last time? I mean, really what caused it? Was it a, was it really a housing problem? No, it was a, it was a funding issue and people get, getting loans that d didn't deserve to get loans and people manipulating those Irrational behind the scenes, Wall Street friends. getting involved and people's greed and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, I would say first and foremost, we, so I've been, I, I've been watching the consumer for 30 years. Number one, a true story. I was declining rental applications and they were being approved for home app or home loans. Isn't that crazy? Hint, that's probably not a good idea. Yeah. Probably. And not once, like repeatedly. So what's one of the things I watch? One of the things that I watch with this current administration is, are they going to lean too far forward? I believe home ownership is important. I believe that getting on the property ladder is awesome. But I do not believe in giving people homes that can't pay for them. If you can't afford it, I don't like seeing you get on the property ladder and then off of it two years later with the foreclosure. That's not a good idea. Not yet is better than, eh, we'll take a shot. But right now, the lending structure is awesome. The other thing was the thing that really caused it and really allowed me to buy so much property in that time frame was the debt structure. It wasn't quite Dave Ramsey stupid, but it was pretty bad. It was two and 28s that ate people alive. And that what people don't know what that is, for two years, you had a 1.9% interest. And this is when interest rates were at 6%. 6 so 1.9 is like asinine. Then what would happen after the two years is it would reset to like 8.9. That's how the bank got you, right? And the story was, don't worry, you'll refi in two years. Well, unfortunately, all you need is a flat market and you can't refi and you're stuck at eight, nine, and now you can't afford it because everybody was getting loans at 1.9. Right. Our debt structure is awesome today. Last time I checked, which is about 60 days old, 98.4% of loans are 30 year or 15 year fixed. Right. It's no adjustable rate mortgage. This is exactly where I was going is I, I, a lot of the people I know that dumped their properties in 2008 and 2009 had adjustable rate mortgages. Thank you. And all the people I had, I have a buddy here locally that dumped all his sub two deals, all his, all his deals other than seller finance deals. The only things he kept were seller finance because every sub two loan he took over was adjustable rate because Toxic. it was so popular back then. And they were greedy going after bad debt structures, but they kept the seller finance deals. And what's funny about the seller finance deals is they all three and four X over that time frame, And because it's because they had fixed debt. Yes. Yeah. Watch your debt structure. And again, these are things I watch all the time. I get mortgage data. I have a mortgage broker, just like Laura's on Sundays. I have two mortgage brokers Friday and Wednesday, I think, because I'm trying to figure out what's going on. The banks can lean too far forward. They absolutely can. They have historically. Not today. If anything, banks are very conservative. I mean, 100% on that. I So I, I'm curious, <clears throat> you know, as we have a lot of people on here that all, all everyone on YouTube is the crash of 2022. The, you know, it's, it's on, it's very frustrating to me seeing that because I have a lot of friends that are successful in their twenties entrepreneurs that are terrified of the real estate market because they're listening to guys that have a millions of subscribers on YouTube and they're saying, crash, it's going to crash. It's wait to buy. It's a terrible time to buy. And I just feel so bad for them because they're just, doing it for the views they're doing it for the likes and because they're making money by you know it's like the dave ramsey thing they're making money from the fears of what people have and you know i just i want to you know hear from you you know what 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 would be your recommendation you know over these next couple of years for maybe that newer investor maybe they're doing some deals mm -hmm. they're starting to maybe do some flips or they're starting to buy some of their first rental properties 
you know, what, what would be, you know, your recommendations for them to like be confident in, in, uh, in making decisions over these next couple of years in this kind of this weird environment, this weird COVID -y and low interest rates, but high inflation environment that we're in. Yeah, I think there's a lot of things there. And again, I go back to my three steps for pace, right? So I try to inspire and repeat uh, everything, right? One rental at a time is a voice as is your guys's channel. And the key about our channels is we're all doing the business. I bring on with Laura eight experts every week, three videos each, 24 videos, really trying to help people with different voices because you never know what voice will cut through the chatter. All of my experts are doing deals, all of them. Uh, they're all probably worth, I mean, it's, it's, it's un, it is amazing that multimillionaires give me their time, but they want to help people. So we're going to keep doing that every single day. The, the people that are preaching fear, they make a penny of you. So every time you watch a view, realize you are handing them a penny. They don't give one rat's ass about you at all. Pace cares. Cody cares. I care, as my experts do. They don't care about you. They just hope they get you in the next title, and every time you click on it, they make a penny. So if you like giving away the pennies, go for it. I'm, you know, to each their own. But what I would tell you to do, it's very simple. My step two, when I answered Pace's question, it's focus and daily discipline. I can't give you confidence. Cody, you can't give them confidence. Pace, you can't give them confidence. You can give them the recipe. You can say, do it over and over. And if they do, i.e. sprint, jog, walk, ignore the idiot sitting down, you're going to be able to learn and build confidence in yourself. If you ask anybody what I try to do with my focus and daily discipline, Lead by example, yes, my step three, but I want you to build confidence in yourself. I believe there is only one question that matters in real estate. What is an average deal in my market? Don't ask me about what the best market is. That's a care. great thing. We talked about this last time you were on the show. Can you break that down? What the hell does that mean, Michael? Yeah, so I believe every market, every asset has an average, right? I did my entire portfolio out of the multiple listing service. And I've been doing this 20 years before we had mobile, hot, you know, smartphones and all of this. So I actually had to be hardwired in. So what you need to do is you need to have a very tight buy box. I've shared my initial one a lot. I'll do it here. Fresno, California, 93703, single family home, three or four bedroom Two bath, one story between seventeen or between fifteen and fifteen hundred and two thousand square feet. I looked at that one criteria, that one buy box for three flipping years. That's it. Fresno's a million flipping people. I looked at that one buy box that was between eighteen and forty listings, depending on the day that I looked at it. And guess what? By about month six. I could tell you that in 2002, the average yield of a three bedroom or a four bedroom in that zip code with that criteria was about 7%. Once I knew average pace, freaking world's my oyster. I am not interested in doing average, but I want to know average. Right. Once I knew average was seven, my job was to find deals at nine, 10, 11. I have students in San Diego. Average they're telling me is 1%. I don't care. If you want to invest in San Diego for whatever reason, fine. Learn average. If average is one, do threes, do fours, right? It's, it's, you, we have to simplify it. And my only question is go learn what average is. You know, in Ohio, maybe it's 10. And I, I love this. I love this a lot because a lot of people overthink like, where should I yes. do deals? Right? Where should I do deals? Where should I do deals? Where, where should I do deals? Guys, start in your backyard. Get to know your backyard. Michael Zuber knows, Fre was it Fresno, Michael? Mm -hmm. Correct. You know Fresno so incredibly well because you've researched it. You knew the agents that were doing the most deals. You knew mm -hmm. what was going on. You saw when people's listings went up and then they failed. You could even predict what was going on with how, like, Absolutely. you knew the market. Mm -hmm. And it started with a little buy box. I, again, people don't, people hear me. I'm a traveling salesman working all around the world. I look at one buy box for three flipping years. That was it. Fresno has lots of stuff, but I had never lived in Fresno. I never spent the night in Fresno. When I started buying there, I knew no one. Now I know hundreds, if not thousands of people. Start doing the work. And do, it takes time. If you buy my course or follow anything I do, it's going to take you 60 or 90 days before you know average. It's okay. 20 minutes a day, seven days a week. 
Bro, I, I love that. Path. I love that statement so much. So I'm in West Palm Beach. I want to highlight that for a lot of people that are putting way too much stress and stress and pressure on themselves. I have a, a non-student comes to me with his wife. Okay. They come up to me. We're at a meetup and he comes to me. He goes, Hey, can I get five minutes of your time? I have, I have some advice I need. Should I quit my job to go <gasps> real estate full time? Should uh, I quit my job? And I'm sure you hear this all the time, Michael. And I'm I, you and you and I are on the same page here. I go, how many deals are you doing? He goes, well, I haven't done a deal yet. Uh, Okay. You are watching way too many people with Lamborghinis and you are watching way too many people with pinky rings and Rolexes and all this stuff that are fancy boys that are trying to tell you that there's a lifestyle associated with real estate investing. The, the it is so different than that, right? You guys don't even know if I'm wearing pants right now. Okay. <laughs> you, but you do know one thing, you know, I don't have a pinky ring and a, and a, and a, and a gold watch that I'm shining around all the time. Yeah. The, the reality is this, this is what I told him. As I said, how many hours a week are you working? He goes, oh, I, I work a nine to five. I go, no, no, no. How many hours are you really working? Because we all know people that have corporate jobs don't actually. Now, when you're a leader taking something from zero to $100 million, that's a different position. But most people in a nine to five job are working about 20 to 30 hours a week. Mm -hmm. Really, truly working 20 to 30 hours a week. Mm -hmm. So I told him, I go, when you get home, you felt like you worked a really hard day, don't you? He goes, yeah, you know, I, I worked. Like I have a full-time job. I go, Here's what's here's the reality. People that are chasing their dreams, millionaires, future multimillionaires, they don't work 20 or 30 hours a week. Our side hustles are 20 or 30 hours a week. And you're sitting here saying I should quit my main source of income that brings stability, safety and um, everything to my wife and my kids so that you can force yourself to take action. That is the advice that he got. He watched a YouTube video and the YouTube video says Quit your job, burn all the bridges, go full-time real estate. And I'm like, this is the worst advice ever. It puts way too much pressure on people. You don't have to sprint in this game. You can take 60 to 90 days to get to know your market. You can take that 60, 90 days to understand your buy box and what average is so that you can actually understand everything. You don't need to do a deal in your first 60 days. Yeah, it's, it is... Uh, again, there's a lot of terrible advice and we love to pick on Dave Ramsey because frankly, I'm jealous. He makes $200 million giving horrible advice, but yeah, the burn the boats, burn the bridges, whatever you want to call it is um, that is going to ruin relationships. I'm, I'm, I, I love my family. I don't believe in high equity or high LTV on my home. There's things I wouldn't do. Yeah. I would, I would never tell someone. And, and again, what is the easiest thing to get today? What is the most powerful thing you can get today, folks? It is a 30 year fixed rate mortgage under 4%. Good luck trying to get one of those without a job. Yeah. Well, you know, what's funny is I'm, uh, I'm going through the process with my own personal home right now and where we've, uh, you know, with, with my personal taxes, because I don't claim enough, it's been, it's always such a challenge getting my own personal loan that my interest rate, because I, I had to go to a, a lender that's, you know, more on bank statements and everything. My mm -hmm. interest rate on my personal home is going to be higher than my interest rate that I get on my freaking rental properties, which pisses me off. <laughs> that's so that's so interesting. I mean, we don't need to get into subject to or seller finance tonight necessarily. I mean, the really in our world, Cody, we have a, what a bundle of six or seven houses getting refinanced with the Burr right now. What are what's our interest rate right now with uh, myinvestorloan.com? Uh, 4.375. Okay. 4.375 on, on long-term 30 year fixed, right? Yep. Yep. Okay. If I'm buying our average sub two and seller finance deal is somewhere hovering around the low 2% because a lot of times we get 0%. Yep. That's average. Sometimes we're mm -hmm. taking over mortgages at 4%, whatever, but the average is 2%. Creative nice. finance is powerful in that regard. But Michael, you remember the days back in what? 2005, six and seven, when interest rates were 6%, people thought they were amazing. Yeah. And again, that was 6% owner. -oc. I was getting investor loans in the sevens. And you probably thought they were great because back yeah. then, when I was, uh, when I was a baby, my parents were saying that their interest rates on their mortgage back then were like 12, 14%. Yeah. Yeah. We've been on a 40 year decline in interest rates. Yeah. It is crazy. It is crazy how cheap money is right now. And so 
acquiring rentals, right? So your book, mm -hmm. one rental at a time, what am I going to learn in that book if I pick up that book? Yeah. So the first thing I want to want everybody to realize is I wrote that book for me. I'm, I just got to be honest, right? I quit my job. I was getting depressed because I wasn't doing anything. So I wanted to write a, I wanted to go back and revisit my 15 years of going from nothing to financial freedom. It's not a how-to book. There's definitely some how-to in it, but it's just our story. All the mistakes, all the wins, all the losses, 60% uh, of the book is a 15 year journey up this crazy market down the other side and back. So you're, you're going to see somebody who started investing in 02, five years before the market. The first house I bought was 107. I sold it at 264. It goes all the way to 300 and then crashes to 75 grand. Holy so man. I have seen a crash. I know what crashes feel like. Um, these idiots who, you know, were, living in their mom's basements and talking about crash and, and rent. They don't know what this stuff is, is all about. I've been through it. And then I came back and I, again, you got to watch lending, right? I had, I had a uh, 800 credit score, seven figure net worth, six figure, multiple six figure incomes together with the wife and I, and we couldn't get a loan for properties because we had more than four. Most people don't realize that lenders, if they don't want to lend, they won't lend. I walked into the bank that had hundreds of thousands of dollars of mine, never missed a payment in my entire life, tried to get a loan on a 70K house that used to be worth 250. They said no. I'm like, you can say no? <laughs> so again, you, you got to, there's so many factors that people got to talk about, but lending is very strong today. No bad loans, no toxic loans. So yeah, I've, I've seen a lot. So in one rental at a time, you're going to see the journey. It starts with reading Rich Dad, Poor Dad and ends with financial freedom. Uh, it's an exciting 15 year journey through four different phases. And then this last 40% are lessons learned, key ideas, things like that. So okay. Here's good. a good so question I, for you for, I wanna, for a lot I'm of people. I'm going to selfishly jump in and ask a question that I thought was a good one. You had highlighted it, but then we moved on is what are your thoughts on the, the short-term rentals versus the long-term rentals? And do you mm -hmm. have any short-term rentals? If you I do, do not. Like yeah, I do not have any short-term rentals. I think short-term rentals are amazing. Mm -hmm. I do think they are currently having their time in the sun. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe so I believe that supply demand is undefeated. Right now, there was, you know, if you look backwards the last couple of years, what was in most demand? Nobody wanted a hotel. They didn't like elevators. They would like to go. They, they still want a vacation. So they were going to rent Airbnbs or RB, VRBOs or whatever. Awesome. Great business. Now, what happens is people repeat what they've done my entire life is they start seeing people make money and they start getting into it and then they start buying lower quality stuff and they start going farther away from you know vr uh, airbnb used to be you know it's it's the lake house it's one street away it's this it's it had unique circumstances and now it's like some bread and butter 1950s three bedroom one bath that you know hasn't been updated since you know whatever the 80s yeah. uh it's it's um I think there are people overpaying. It's still working. If it, if you have that property, that thing, go for it. I definitely recommend running plan B. I do not think enough people have plan B. What's a plan B? Please, please run the numbers on your Airbnb purchases as month to month. Make that your worst case scenario. People are not doing that. If you buy it based on um, Airbnb numbers and then the market changes or more supply comes on and you got a discount 25% or 30% or the city does this and then your month to month rental makes it an alligator. If you know what an alligator is, it's in my book. It's not fun. Um, you could be in trouble. So I think Air I think Airbnb and, and daily nightly rentals. Awesome. Uh, I do think too many people are not doing the work, frankly. They're just they're buying a house, some know nothing house. Oh, it's an Airbnb now. Really? It's a, kind of a busy street. You know, it's got bars on the windows. You really think, you know, people are going to like this? Yeah, it's, I'm seeing some pretty crazy things right now in that space. Great idea. Yeah. Can work, but I see some people getting kind of goofy with it. I, I agree on that. And one of the other things that I see that, that also scares me with it is there's a lot of people that are creating – courses around oh, yes. rental arbitrage on Airbnb. Go go lease like 10 different properties and rental arbitrage Airbnb. I'm like, I just feel like that's like the slow path to seeing a bunch of people lose everything when, so here's a real true story. Our One of our properties is in a historic area. It's now an Airbnb for us. 
but it has a guest house in the back and then the front house. There's a nice. company that did this exact thing at the beginning of last a year. A big company. A big company. A big company, like hundreds of employees company. And they leased our property and then they were doing the arbitrage model. And so sure. they had hundreds, if not thousands of properties they were doing this on. Two and a half weeks into COVID and the emergency lockdown situation, I got a call from executive or might have even been the owner. I don't know. They had laid off most of their company and he said, we're not going to be able to make the rent payment next month. You know, things are bad when the CEO of the, of the company is calling you to tell you the rent's not going to get paid. It's not going to get paid. There's nothing for you to come after. You can try to sue us, but we're insolvent. And Good luck. Sorry. Yeah. Literally, yeah. literally, that's what he said. He's like, you can keep the furniture. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, that's, again, I've been doing this a long time. People are, um, they're predictable. The, the consumer, the person I've studied for 30 years, they move in a herd, right? The money's made being early. The money's, the money's made getting out of the way. Why did I, why did I sell all my properties in 2006? It's because I saw the idiots coming. Was I early? Yeah, I was early by 10%, but I got out of the way. I, I went from eight to 80 units. I sat back and I'm like, damn it. I left 10% on the table. And then lo and behold, the next five years, I'm like, shit, glad I got out of that stuff. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, here's a here's a great question for you. I, I think a lot of people going back to the quitting job, right? I want to quit my job. People ask that question, maybe not because they truly want to quit their job, just because um, I mean, maybe they have a real fear of it, but they're curious. If I get into real estate, how quickly can I quit my job? If I follow everything that Michael teaches or Pace teaches or one of these people teach, how quickly can I uh, quit my job, right? Mm -hmm. First and foremost, I don't know what your income is. So we got to talk about your income because if you're bringing $25,000 a month, we got a problem. This is going to take you a little while to replace $25,000 in, in income. Mm -hmm. But let's say for the average person that's taking home, let's say $6,000 a month, mm -hmm. is that possible for somebody to quit in six months? Is it possible for somebody to quit in five years? Is it a 15-year journey? What mm -hmm. would you tell people that are on that path is a so, reasonable expectation. I would like to answer this in three steps because I try to do this all the time. Okay. I want to speak to the high school and college graduates. I, I've been lucky enough to speak in, to seniors in high school repeatedly. It's one of the funnest things I do. And one of the questions I either open with or close with is this question. How many of you, by show of hands, could live on $2,500 a month? They, in, in fairness, they're seniors. They live with mom and dad. They don't really know. But every time I've asked the question, they say yes. Everybody. And I say, congratulations. If you can keep that up, you can be retired before you're 25. Right? I love it's, that. It's, it's people, the rat race is real, people. Rich Dad, Poor Dad opened me up to my failures for a decade. I was that person with my wife making 25 grand a month, gross. And it took us 15 years to get out. Uh, but most people would get up between, if you're following my model, buy and hold, rinse and repeat, cash out, refi, all of that. So not wholesaling, not flipping, no chunk money. Uh, you can get out in six to eight years, most people, certainly by 10. Love that. Um, that's a great, that's a great, uh, honestly, a reasonable um, deal. I mean, the reality is people that work a nine to five, they never invest in real estate. They stay in their nine to five until they're 60, 65. Yeah. Again, I started at 30. Uh, my wife, whose name is Olivia, she retired uh, after nine years, and uh, I retired after 15, replacing two six-figure incomes comfortably. And it's absolutely possible. We probably could have been done at 12 or 13, but I was an idiot who loved my job. Um, but it's... Um, it's, it's well, you're I, good at it, bro. Yeah, yeah, I was. But again, you don't have... It doesn't... Uh, what I want to be clear is it doesn't have to end there. I tell people it starts with a better financial future. I want people to get to four pace in Cody. Four! I tell my story all the time. 200 units, blah, blah, blah. Yay. Wrote a book. Wrote two books. Yay. Doesn't mean anything. I want everybody to have a goal of four. If you can get to four, your financial future will be awesome. By yeah. the time you get to retirement, they're probably paid off. If not, you can sell one, pay the other three off. You could refi all four of them, have a bunch of money and go party. And as Elon Musk has told us, if you get a loan, it's not taxable, right? Oh, he doesn't yeah. have freaking any oh, income. Yeah. Let's let's be the rich people here, people. Oh, look at Corbin. She's awesome. Say hi, Michael. Hi, Michael. 
Hi, how are you? Hey, Corbin. Say hi, Cody. Hi, Cody. She's hi, Corbin. She's... <laughs> so, so one thing that that I want to mention on there too is we're talking about the like, quit, do I quit my job or or that situation is. I think a lot of people too have to really figure out, you know, what do they actually spend? Like, what are their actual expenses that they need to be able to replace? And then as they start making more money, not having lifestyle creep. And I know this because of an experience that I had, like my pre real estate days, when I did network marketing, I got to, you know, six figures, I was making like 150 grand a year. And what did I do? I, and I was like 18. I go buy a brand new Jeep. I buy a new BMW. I'm living in a 3,700 square foot house. Like I do all these things and I'm just spending money on designer clothes like a dummy. And as, as my income would go up, I would just raise my expenses right to that. Right. And so mm -hmm. then that company goes away and then all of my money and everything that I own goes away and I move back to my parents. And I'm like, wow, like that was a painful experience. I never want to experience that ever again for the rest of my life. And so I continuously try to encourage people to figure out one is like, what are your actual like personal monthly living expenses? And that should be the goal of getting to that, like getting that replaced. Like that's what I always been thinking about is like, how do, how does someone get to that? Cause that's, that's like, like what you said, like you have like more of like the stability once you get to like that four, because you're getting maybe a couple thousand dollars a month, depending on the market, the cash flow and everything. But once you get to your personal living expenses are covered without obviously your aspirational, like, you know, going on a yacht or like crazy <laughs> stuff like that. Right. But you have a lot of the, the your base is covered where then you can go and be risky with like money outside of like your moat. Like I had a, one of my mentors early on, Pace knows him, Frank Kelly. He's like, Cody, you got to build your personal moat. He's like, go and build your financial and, you know, cash flow and like ha have that be your moat around your castle. And, and then you can go run outside the castle and go be, you know, maybe a little bit frivolous on some investments and be bullish on those. But then you could always run back in, you know, <laughs> close the drawbridge and go back into your castle. <laughs> yeah, I think that is that is advice number one for everybody to talk about. I, I actually ask the question, how much do you spend every month? What's your financial nut? It, you know, it depends on whether I want to use slang or not. Yeah. But yeah, it is embarrassing how few of us know that answer. Right. I, I ask people all the time and they usually come back with this five grand, six grand, ten grand, two grand. I have to tell you all something. If you give me that answer, I'm going to call bullshit on that answer. You're being freaking lazy. It's not two grand or five. There's no, it's mathematically impossible for it to end in a round number like that. It is something yeah, like $3,807. Yeah. Get the exact freaking number, folks. You don't know where you're going until you've got the number. Go get the number. And it's a two-step process. I just interviewed somebody the other day who went from zero to 10 units, and he told me his goal was 25 grand. I'm like, that is not your freaking goal. What do you spend every month? It's five grand. No, that's not your freaking goal. It's got to be, you know, again, $3,817 or whatever. Do the work, people. Stop being lazy. If you're not doing the work, I'm going to call you out on it. I am, I am, I don't have time to waste. I have an, I have an idea. So for a year uh, and a half, we ran Sunday service as an hour and a half live podcast. And we learned that people don't go back and watch the full podcast if they're an hour and a half. They only watch them if they're an hour or less. Okay, so I, we always try and keep this as an hour or less. We're at 58 minutes. We're well over 300 live viewers. I think what we do is we have people, we have you come back next week or the week after, whenever you have time, and we answer the most um, commonly asked question in the side chat. Okay, do you guys know what that question is? It's popped up about 100 times. I haven't looked. Okay, I will find it so you guys can see exactly what it is. Um, everybody keeps asking the same question over and over and over. And the question is, how do I find the average mm. in my market? Okay. Awesome. Um, so what I would, oh, here we go. Uh, a whole bunch of people popping up right here. Probably it's probably brought up, um, at least 50 times this has been brought up. Okay. Okay. So what I think we do is we have you come back and we sure. answer this question, how to find average, right? Maybe what you do is you coach Cody along sure. and Cody does a screen share on Zillow or prop stream or something like that. Awesome. And Cody's your, your student, I'm your student. And you go, all right, this is how we're going to find average of deals in your market. Are you Done. open to doing something like that? Yeah, let's do it next week. 
Because I think tac I think tactical stuff is what people really like about Sunday yeah, services. Like we'll fun. actually share things, talk about documents, etc. Done. Let's do it. The, next week, guys. Um, the last time I'm speaking on stage for probably a year is um, this coming weekend in Vegas. If you guys want to come, please come speak. Uh, come see me speak. I'm speaking next to Jim Quick. Jim. Oh my freaking goodness! I'm speaking next to some pretty amazing people. Andy Frisella. Um, is the is the uh, keynote speaker. I'm really, really excited about Jim Quick, but I'm going to be speaking on stage at the Thrive event. I just gave you guys the link, attendthrive.com forward slash Las Vegas. I already have probably 75 of my students that are coming. Come hang out. We're going to have a big blowout on um, either Friday or Saturday night. We're going to have Ryan Pineda, Jamil Damji, Matt Terrio, and myself are going to throw a big end of the year party for all of our students. We're all going to get together and squat up. So would love to see you guys out there in Vegas. Um, a lot of people, by the way, are saying um, that they're excited about Michael coming back and figuring out what's the average in my market. Cody, are you love ready it. to do some tactical stuff? Yeah, that's going to be a lot of fun. I think a lot of people will get a ton of value from it as well. And I mean, I, every time I'm listening to Michael, I'm always learning stuff as well. I mean, I even took a couple notes down from uh, from listening to him tonight. But so real quick, Michael, where where can people find you? Uh, you know, obviously, we're going to be back, you know, next weekend. But where can people find you or what are the where where do you want people to connect with you at? Uh, one rental at a time. If you go to your Google search bar, you should find a YouTube channel, Instagram, book, website, all that stuff. Not not too hard to find these days. Perfect. Love um, it. Okay. So guys, two things actually, before we peace out one, we're going to come back and talk about the average and look at this. Malcolm Finlayson is actually one of our private lenders. Good to see you in here, Malcolm. He's amazing. He says also challenge the audience to come back and know their monthly expense. Ooh. Ooh, love I that. want to do that guys. We're all about transparency. Do you guys want to see my monthly expense? <laughs> I want to see your AC bill. <laughs> um, our, our monthly expense is pretty high. We travel a lot, obviously. Like just in the last couple of weeks, we spent like 20 grand traveling and doing all sorts of stuff. It, our monthly expense is extraordinarily high because of all the travel we do. But when I'm not traveling, it, it's extraordinarily low. So <laughs> um, I want to know what he means by extraordinarily low, but okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's levels here, man. I'm uh, guys. I'm all about transparency. I'll share all of that stuff. And I would love to have everybody come in here and we'll th fill it up with the chat. We'll have good conversations and we'll even give advice on, Hey, how many units would it take for you to quit your job? How many units would it take for you to comfortably live? Let's have an honest conversation next week, guys, your homework this week. Here's homework. Figure out what your monthly expenses are, not to a rounded dollar, but to a penny, right? Go back in your bank account. Right, go to mint.com, have mint.com figure it out. Mint.com will go through and categorize all your expenses for you. They'll give you a free trial. Go on the mint.com free trial, download the report, and go, Oh my gosh, I'm spending way more money than I thought. And especially Starbucks is more money than my freaking mortgage. Holy <laughs> moly. Right. So let's talk about that next week. And then we're going to figure out how, what the average is in my market. And guys, give uh, you've gotten a lot of love. In fact, we've had a lot of students say, or a lot of people in here. Sorry, I've been on Zoom with my students all day today. Um, a lot of people in here saying Michael Zuber is the greatest guest of this year. Have him come back. So guys, he's going to come back next week. We're going to talk about the average in your individual market. And we're going to give you tactical advice. Michael Zuber will treat Cody Barton as if Cody is his student and we will give some tactical, amazing stuff. Cody, why don't you take us home? Amazing. So, uh, Michael, thanks again. Thank you so much for being here. This is a ton of fun. I wish we could continue tonight, but we'll continue next weekend. Um, so excited to do that. Again, for everybody that has not uh, you know, tuned into Sunday Service before, again, you could listen to Sunday Service on Spotify and iTunes. Um, if you want to find out more about what Michael is doing, just search on YouTube, Google, anywhere, one rental at a time to follow him and everything that he's doing. He comes out with multiple videos every single day on YouTube. It's pretty freaking awesome. So um, go check them out. Appreciate you guys for being here. Everyone have an amazing, productive week. We'll see ya. Thank you guys. Have a good week. Later. Uh -huh.